Hi, welcome to the Calculus 3 lecture series. And uh, we are in the uh, unit number two. We talk about the partial derivatives. That means we'll talk about the derivatives with uh, uh, multivariate variables here. So this is our second video. We're going to talk about the lecture number two in this unit. And uh, this one's here, we talk about the limit and the continuities here. Okay, so now let's uh, go to the worksheets and uh, see uh, what uh, you know, what type of the problems we have. Okay, so here, let me go here. All right, okay. All right, so now before we start, okay, let's start with a little bit uh, review what we did, right? So for the first video, we basically start a functions in R3 or R4, and uh, we talk about the domain and the range, those things. So in here, we talk about the continuity and the limits here. Okay, so now let's do a brief review. Like I said, um, a lot of time in the calculus three, when we talk about the new topic, we're always going to take a look at how they related to the like the single variable areas here, right? So we talk about the limit. Okay, so let's take a look at the one in the R2. So where you learn from the calculus one. Okay, so we said the limit x approach to a, f of x equal to l. What's that means here, right? Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, so let's see here, this is my function, for example. So this is a function f of x here. Okay, and then I have a value here, this is my a. And so the, in here I have, a, you know, the, the functions here, a value here, I said this is the l. Okay, so in the calculus, uh, you know, we said uh, in here, you know, what is the limit x approach to a equal to l mean? So that means we know, because in here, this is x axis, right? So in this interval, you can approach from the right hand side, or you can approach from the left hand side of the value. And uh, so we said uh, limit, x approach to a from the right hand side f of x is equal to a number l1 and the limit x approach to a from the left hand side of fx is equal to l2. So we say the if, right, so we say if l1 equal to l2, then we know the limit exists, right, so we know the limit x approach to a f of x is this equal to each other equal to l, now we know this is the limit exists just here. So like in R2, because this is your x value, <clears throat> so you only have what? You only have two directions to approach, right? So you either approach from the right hand side or you approach from the left hand side. Okay, so now let's take a look in R3. Okay, so in the R3, remember what happens here. So the domains right now in the R3 is a what? It's a region, right? So it's a region of the all the paired value of x, y here. So this is what it looks like in the R3 here. Right? So this is your x and y here, right? So this is your x and y. And now in here, I know my here, for example, this is my domains, right? So this is the this is the domain of the this function. Right? So if I have a, a point, see here, let's see here, if I have a point here, right? So if this point uh, I would say is a b so because this is the two dimensions a b right so we said the limit exists what's that mean that means uh, you know like this numbers uh, you know you go through this function f of x y right so 
you're going to reach uh, some value of the z's, right? So this is uh, my l, and uh, then this one's here. We're going to say, hey, you know, when I'm getting closer and closer to this number, I'm going to closer and closer to l. But in here, take a look here, because this is a point A, B, so in fact, I can approach to this point, right? So in many, many directions, I can approach to this ones here. I can say, hey, I can approach from this direction. I can approach from this direction. I can approach from this direction, right? So that's what is the difference from the R2. R2, you only have two directions you approach it. But in here, you know, because this one really you are, you know, like, uh, what you, you are like, uh, with, you know, like a, it's a circles, right? So it's regions here, right? So last is the differences here. So when you approach it, you are really, is approaching from the, all the directions. So in order for limit to exist, so it's the same thing. That means that every directions, they need to reach the same limit. So it's the same here, like uh, in R2, I only have two directions here, right? So in here, that means every directions, and I need to find the limit in the R, you know, that we approach to the same way. So in the R3, try to prove the limit exists. It's not quite easy, but, uh, you know, try to prove limit not exist is easier. Why? As long as you find the one path, right, does not match the other path, then I know the limit does not exist. So that's the one way you can do. You can take a look to see if the limit is, you know, not exist. If you can find a path, and also we have infinity number of the paths, right? So if you can find the path, it's not exist. Right, then I will be say, hey, then the limit is not exist. So we said the not exist. So the limit not exist is sometimes is easier to prove. All right. And also you cannot say, hey, I find the three or four paths that all equal, then I said the limit is equal. No, you cannot say that. All right. So that's the, the key differences here. In R2, you only approach from right-hand side, left-hand side. But in here, you have an infinity number of the paths you, know, you can approach to. Okay, so also let's try to write it in the former definitions here, right? So in R2, so what do we say here? So the limit here, so the precise definition, so we say for all the epsilons here, right? So that means if, uh, you want to find that this is the absence here, right? So for all the absence here, then we say the layer exists a uh, what? Layer exists a uh, delta. That means uh, doesn't matter how close you want, I always can find a value of x closer, you know, close to the a's, right? So layer exists a uh, delta greater than zero, such that, Right, so the x minus a less than delta, then I can guarantee the f of x minus l is less than what? Less than epsilon, right? So this is what we say is mathematical definitions here. Okay, so now let's take a look at in R3, how do we say the limits here, right? So we said still, Okay, so for all the epsilon, right, greater than zero, right, so like in here, this is what is our epsilon here, right, so that's, a, you know, how close you want to this uh, limits here. So that means for any, for all the epsilon there, so there exist a delta greater than zero, so far is, uh, you know, exactly the same, right? So such that, okay, if the f of x, y, you know, belong to this little circles here, this domains here, right? Then we know, you know, the, 
So instead of say x minus a, the distance, and then I need to find the distance formula for the two, like the, for the two points, right? So I would say the x minus a to the square plus y minus b to the square. And uh, if uh, any numbers here, right? So if this one's here is uh, less than delta, then I can conclude uh, what? Then I can conclude f of x, y, negative minus l is less than epsilon so here. So from here, take a look here, right? So this is the what? So this is uh, the circle formula, right? So that's why we say you approach from the old directions here. All right, and that is uh, what the, you know, what do we have here? So need to be careful, right? So the, you know, the we need to be careful. So R three is here. There is approach from the old direction. Okay, so if you said how about if I want to write in the uh, vector form, you can do like this. Also, let me get some space here. Okay, so if you want to do in the vector form then the form can be pretty similar, you know, like the R2s here. So let's try to get some space here. So I said, uh, so if I set a vector X here, right? So I put a, this is like the vector X and Y, and uh, the point A, just like in here, right? We generalize it. So the point A, so we say, this is a vector is A and B here. Okay, so we can rewrite it as we said for or epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that, right, so we can do the same way, such that, so now in here we said it's x minus this vector, Right, so if this minus this vector is less than delta greater than zero, then we can conclude here that this is f of x here, right? So this is a vector minus l is less than what? It's less than epsilon here, right? So this one here is match the r two's definition, kind of the um, kind of closer, but you need to be careful here, right? So what do we need to be careful here? So this is a vector, right? So x is a vector. So that's why you do vector minus vector, the length, and the, this one is vector form. So it does not matter, right? So it's like the, so that's why this give you the same idea. Just be careful, you know, in R3, you are approaching from infinity number of the directions here. Okay. So now let's go to our next ones here. So this is basically what is the definitions, right, for the, you know, for the limit here. Also, if you remember, like in the calculus one, when we try to do the limit, what is the first things we try to do? So we have several methods here, right? So the first thing here is simplest one, you just substitute your value into your function to see this value exists or not. If it exists, then the limit exists. Then, you know, like, and then we run into the problem like zero over zero things. Then the next things you try is a factor to see you can cancel out the trouble term. That means I'm going to cancel out the removable discontinuity layer, right? Or you can times the conjugate, all those things you learn in the calculus one. So in here, we do the same way. So when you try to find the limit, the first things you want to do is that you just simply plug it, plug it into layer to see if it works or not. If it works, great. If it's not, then we might need to think about the different ways here. Okay, so like for here, this one's here is limit, x, y approach to four and two. That means uh, x equal to four, y equal to approach to two. So it's six times four plus three times two. Yeah, this one is perfect. This one, you know, uh, you know, give us a limit here. So the limit exists. So that's good. Okay, so let's take a look at this one see here. This is the limit x, y, three, two, right? That means the x approach to three, y approach to two. So even the function, 
it does not have x. That's fine. I'm just plugging the y value. So this is two to the third minus two, right? So it's six. Hey, great, right? So the limit exists. Okay, now let's take a look here. So for this ones here, so we have the, you know, the x square, y square. So if you plug in, right, the x, y, so what is this one going to approach to? It's very approach to one over zero. Of course, one, I mean, approach to zero. So what is this number going to approach to? Approach to infinities, right? So e to the infinity, what is the limit here? Ha ah, is infinity. Right, so we know this limit is going to infinity. Okay, so now let's take a look at this one's here. So this one's here, x approach to one, y approach to negative one. Okay, so let's see. The first thing so we always do is just plug it in to see it work or not. So this is one square minus two times one times negative one plus negative one square minus four. So this is one, the negative, negative, so it's a four minus four is equal to zero. Okay, and then the bottom here, this will be one minus negative one plus minus two is equal to zero. Oh boy, so the, you know, when we plug that in, you know, we have a zero over zeros here, right? So for the zero over zeros here, we know this is undetermined. I don't know what is the limit. So the first thing here, we say, okay, if we have those type of the problems here, let's see, I can factor some things here. So if you do, so, you know, you take a look at this is x squared uh, minus uh, 2xy, y squared, right? So you can factor this is x minus y squared minus four, and this is x minus y minus two. Okay, so continue. This is the limit x, y approach to one, negative one. Okay, so this is a squared minus b squared, right? So this is x minus y minus two, x minus y plus two. So this is x minus y minus two. Oh, pretty good, right? So, oh, pretty good. I have these two. I can cancel, right? So, do I, so this is, we put it removable. This continuity here, so limit to x, y, and uh, one negative one. I only have x minus y plus two over one. So this will be one minus negative one plus two over one. So what is the limit? Limit is a four, okay? So the limit of four, this is exists just here, right? Okay, so this is just a, uh, uh, simple practice of how to find the limit here. Let's take a look at the next ones here. Well, I have these functions here. So the, I have a x cubed y, I want to find the limit, right? So I want to find the limit of an x approach to zero zeros here. So that's how to, of course, the first thing is you put a zero zero in here, you will get a zero over zeros, right? So it's undetermined. So I need to see which way we do here. Like I said, uh, typical try to prove the limit not exist is easier, right? Okay, so here I broke up, I break it into a several parts. So first ones here, they say, hey, because we know, right, this is a zero, zero, that means uh, I'm approaching to this point, that means uh, many different paths. The path doesn't have to be lying, so it can be a curve, right? So it's infinite number of the paths to approach it. So first thing is I say approach to the curve y equal to zero, all right? So that means y equal to zero. That means the x y is equal to zeros, right? So if you put the y equal to zero, so this is a zero, this is a two x squared, okay? So that means this is equal to zero. So I know for all the x here, right? And uh, f of has what? Has a limit zero along the y equal to zero line. So if you approach it from the y equal to zero line, that is what the, we will have here. Okay, now let's take a look. 
how about if I want to approach from the y equal to the x squared? That means uh, I'm approaching to this point by a quadratic, right? Okay, so this is uh, x and y equal to the x squared, correct? Okay, so now I just uh, put, so this is x cubed. So y, y equal to x squared, right? So this is x squared. So basically, I just uh, put the here, right? You see this one's here. Okay, so now the buttons here is 2x square, uh, 6 plus y square, so it's x to the what? x to the fourth, correct? Okay, so now let me factor out the x to the fourth. So here, this is x. So if this one I factor the x to the fourth out, I have a 2x square plus one, so here, right? So now in here, I know the x force, x force cancel. All right, so now I will say the limit x, y approach to zero, zero f of x, y is equal to the limit, basically is x approach to zero, for the x to x squared plus one, right? And because the y is the same as x, so it is approach to zero. What is here? Ha, huh, this is zero here. So that means if you go to the direction y equal to the x squared, you still get zeros here, right? Let's take a look how about I approach from the y equal to the cube, right? So the same thing here, you say x, x to the cube. So now your f of x function will be x cubed, x cubed, right? Because y equal to the x cubed. So this one will be the 2x cubed plus what is here, x squared will be x to the sixth, right? Because y equal to x cubed. So now in here, this is x to the sixth. So how many x to the sixth here? You have a 3x to the sixth. Oh, here, I say, okay, x and x to six, I can cancel. So this is one third here. So then I know the limit x and y approach to zero, zero, f of x, x cube. So it's really, is just the limit x approach to zero for the one third. And then here, you know, if it's a constant, so the limit is what is one third here. Okay, so now I find the contradictions here, right? Because the, when you do x equal to x zero, y equal to x squared, you approach to zero. And uh, if you approach to y equal to zero, that means x axis is equal to zero. But, you know, if you approach from the y equal to the x to the cube is one third. So they are not equal. So when they are not equal, what that means here? So here I can say the limit does not exist, right? Does not exist. Why the limit does not exist? Why? Because uh, what? Because I find one pass have a different, uh, you know, one pass has a different uh, uh, limit than the other. Like we said, uh, you know, every pass, they have to have the same limit here, okay? So let's take a look uh, from the um, plot to see what is this function looks like. So they might give you some idea why the limit does not exist here. So let's go to the, okay, so here, okay? So the, this is my functions, right? So this is the x to the cube times y. And then it's 2x6 plus y to the square. So as you can see, this is the graph here. So if you turn around, so as you can see, when it approach to zero, they have all many different paths approach to zero, right? So if you turn around, you can see here, right? So that's why they don't have a, a common path when they approach to zero here. So that's why the limit approach to zero is not exist. Right, so that's why those graphs can give you idea of why, all right? So now let's go back to our worksheets, okay? So let's take a look at the other problems here. 
Okay, so the other problems here, we find the continuities, right? So in the R2, the continuities here, right? So in R2, we said the limit has to exist, right? So x approach to a, f of x has to equal to f of a. That means the limit has to equal to the function value. So this is the same, right? So in the R3, it's the same thing. They say when you approach to a limit to the a, b, you have to, you know, equal to the function value equal to the, um, you know, the limits, right? Okay, so let's take a look. They said, uh, hey, where is the f of xy net log x minus y is uh, continuous, okay? And uh, so we know the net log functions, it will be a continuous functions, right? So we know the net log x minus y, this one here, is going to be what? It's going to be continuous on its domain, right? And uh, but the domains here, we know natural log cannot have zero, right? So the domains here, so x minus y has to be what? Has to be greater than zero. That means x has to be greater than y here, right? So that means uh, for this function here, x is greater than y. So this is x equal to y here, right? So x has to be greater than y. That means uh, for this function, they're only going to be continuous in where? In this region, right? So the x minus, uh, so x has to be greater than y here, right? So that means this is the y, they're going to be continuous. Okay, so now let's take a look at number four here. So let's say where is this continuous here, okay? So we know, just like we say, the only the function value, so this, you know, everywhere is continuous except at x squared plus xy, the domain, if this domain equal to zero, so it will not be continuous. So if you factor, so this is x plus y equal to zero, right? So that means uh, x cannot be equal to zero and uh, x cannot be equal to negative y here. So this function is going to continue, but going to break down when x equal to zero, that means the y-axis. And, uh, you know, so that's basically here, it's going to be continuous everywhere, except x equal to zero, that means this is the y-axis, and uh, x equal to negative y, right? x equal to negative y, so it's this line here. So it's going to continue on the R2 except these two areas. That's why I put the dot lines here. Okay, so now it's like the next one here. We said, uh, is f of x, y continues at zero, zero. So they say if the x, y not equal to zero is this one. If x, y equal to zero, I defined, is this a continuous? And uh, we say what? We say no here, why? Because, uh, okay, even the function value is defined, but the limit x, y approach to zero, zero at the f of x, y, Right, so what do we say here? We say the f of x, y, we say not exist, right? We proved it, right? See here from the previous one, we proved it, right? So we say from the previous problems, we say not exist. So if limit not exist, so of course it's not continuous, right? So that's what we learn in the calculus one. So the continuity is one level higher, the hierarchy in the limit. So limit has to exist and the limit has to equal to the function value. So for this one see here, the limit not exist. So that's why we don't even, so we say it's not a continuous, okay? So in here, the number six here, we said where is f of x, y, e x, uh, one over x squared is continuous. As we see, the exponential function is a continuous. So the only ones here, I have these troubles here, right? So if the denominator equal to zero, that means x squared plus y squared equal to zero. 
I cannot define in the domains, right? So what is the only numbers here? It will be equal to zero. That means x, y equal to what? Zero, zero at the origins, right? So that's why we say, hey, if this is the one, then it's not a, con you know, it's not a continuous at the zero, zero, right? So the, you know, they can continue and everywhere except at the zero, zero, because the zero, zero is undefined. So let's take a look uh, by go to the, our CalcPlot 3D, take a look uh, what is the, this function looks like. Okay, so here, okay, so this is our last problem, right? So let's take a look here. Ha, huh, so if you plot an exponential, like x squared, one over x squared, see here, this is what the, so if you turn around, hey, this looks like chimney, right? So that's why you see here, this zero, zero, right, is undefined, right? So that is why we say the zero, zero. But when you're getting closer and closer and, uh, you know, kind of this uh, kind of the chimney is going to get smaller, smaller, but they're not going to define in the zero, zero. All right, that's cool, right? That's why when you look the graph, it will give you some uh, basic idea. And uh, so it's kind of like, that's why we say we need to kind of just see the graph. Uh, you know, that will be good. All right, that's it. So this is a very easy section about the limits and the continuities, right? So the only thing different from the calculus one, you need to remember, the calculus one, when we try to find the limit, we find the limit the approach from the right and approach from the left. We only have two directions because we only work for the x, right? So, but in the R3, our domain become a front, become a planes, right? So when you approach a point A, A and B, like A, B, so you really approach it from a region. That means you approach the path you approach. You know, you have infinity number of the paths you approach. So try to find the limit, you know, the, that means every path has to satisfy, all right? And like I say, it's not easy to prove that, but you know, you know, so, so typical the approach we, you know, we take is, let's see is any path, they have a different limit. So I can prove the limit not exist probably it's a lot easier to prove limit exists here. Okay, that's it for these sections here. And uh, it's nice to talk to you. And um, so the next section, just like we follow the calculus one, what are we going to do? We're going to take a look at exactly how do we take the derivative here. Okay, that's it. And you have a good day, all right, bye.